Welcome to Beyond Category. I'm Eric Felton. We're here at Strathmore in Rockville, Maryland to hear the pianist Myra Melford. She combines jazz with avant-garde and world musics to create something fresh and new. Let's head on into the mansion here at Strathmore and check it out.
Myra Melford, that was wonderful. Oh, thank what you, a, Eric. What a terrific song. Now, that's not only original composition, but it's off your new record, Life Carries Me This Way. And that the whole record is devoted to doing music inspired by the paintings, drawings of particular artists. Tell, tell us about that's the right. Um, well, the, the artwork that I base this project on is by a wonderful California artist named Don Reich, who lived most of his life in Sacramento. And um, unfortunately, he passed away before I finished the project, so he didn't get to hear it. But he did um, give me about 16 of his drawings uh, and said, do whatever you want musically with these. And it took me a while to figure out what, what I wanted to do. I put them all up in my studio in Berkeley, California, and lived with them for a couple of years and started to really get a feel for what they were saying to me, how they spoke to me. And then rather than trying to translate them into music, I waited until I felt like I had a musical response. So it was really a kind of dialogue um, process between how I like to play the piano and how Don expresses himself through color and composition. Yeah, you know, I think about a lot of um, modern efforts at different kinds of music notation as opposed to the traditional Western write a note, it means that this specific note. There's a lot of uh, sort of modernist music that will have a score that has squiggles and shapes and you kind of have to interpret as playing it. But it seems that what you're doing with these paintings is something beyond that, not trying to follow a particular line in the painting or some translated in any direct way, but to right. just have an emotional response to it. Yes, and that's by and large true, although there are uh, several of the drawings that I could interpret as what you're referring to graphic a uh, graphic score. But in those cases, again, it's not like a literal translation. It's still something about the feeling of the piece as well as the lines and the colors and so on. And tell us about the first piece you did, which is Park Mechanics. Yeah. And that drawing, what did you take from the drawing and how did you interpret it? Yeah, the drawing is almost kind of a cubist feeling to it. It's, it's, uh, it's, it looks like a, a person made out of machine parts. Uh, with a backdrop of some trees. It's quite abstract, but I'm sure it's Don's version of the guys fixing cars in the park across from his house in Sacramento. Um, and what I really got from that one was the sense of rhythm. It, ha it felt like it had a repetitive, and, but also kind of a driving rhythm to it. So that's really what I was trying to capture with my, with my composition. Well, could you do another one of your compositions inspired by Don Reich's uh, art? Yes, I'd like to play a piece called Red Land, which is a beautiful landscape, very vibrant colors. It looks like a planet, the sun, or the moon either rising or setting. And as I mentioned earlier, sadly, Don passed away before I finished this project, so this piece is also a kind of memorial to him or um, in, in, in his memory. And I was really going for these layers of colors and harmonics kind of building up. Myra Melford.
Myra Melford, another one of Don Reich's paintings turned into song. Um, this is your first project that you've done as a solo pianist, and you work in so many different ensembles. Um, tell me how the experience of working by yourself at the piano uh, has been compared to working with other ensembles. The most striking thing about the process for me has been um, really an opportunity to think about how I like to play the piano, what are the kinds of vocabulary I like to use, what kinds of moods and structures lend themselves well to just playing the piano, and, um, and, and yeah, really just how do I like to improvise at the piano if I'm not thinking about other instruments or arranging in any way. Well, is there any example you can think of of something that you wouldn't really do in an ensemble context, but that you found you really like to do just as, as a way of playing the piano? The thing about solo piano is, instead of responding to other people, I'm responding to, well, the idea of the composition, the drawing, but also what I'm hearing, how I'm playing, and it's kind of a feedback loop that gets going, and it's really very different than playing with with other people. Well, and especially since so much of what you do in ensembles with others is not the kind of traditional jazz thing where right. somebody's going to take a solo, the next person takes a solo, but really something more collective, a kind of collective improvisation that all happens at the same time. Right. So you don't have that happening here now, or if there yeah. is a collective improvisation, it's between your hands. Right, and exactly. And the other thing that's great about playing solo is that the, the arrangement or the approach I take can vary from performance to performance. Um, and I don't have to worry about changing the structure of the piece and trying to communicate that to other people. So how much of what you're doing in a given piece with this project is really worked out and how much of it is improvisation? You know, I, some of the pieces that I've played for you today um, tend to be a little bit more on the worked out side, but I have some pieces that are quite a bit more open um, where they'll be drastically different from performance to performance. And then there are some pieces where I know what sort of composed material I want to hit someplace within the performance, but I may start with an open improvisation and then go into that material and then go someplace else. Whereas in these pieces it was really, this is the structure I'm improvising within that. The last song on your new album, Still Life, is a particular favorite of mine. Oh, Could you do that one for us? Yes, I'd love to. Terrific. Myra Melford.
Myra Melford. So you've spent a lot of time not only traveling around performing, but traveling to study as well. You took a year or so in India to study Indian music. How, how was that experience? Oh, it was amazing. It was really one of the best years of my life. I got a Fulbright scholarship to study North Indian music with a harmonium, uh, wonderful harmonium player. And a harmonium is a little pump organ with That's a key right. keyboard. That's right. It's a little hand pump organ. It's like a little prairie organ that the missionaries used to carry around the world. And one of the things I've, I've heard you talk about before is how jazz is a hybrid music to begin mm. with. And so you don't really necessarily look at incorporating elements, whether it's Indian music or from elsewhere, as being jazz plus something, but rather really sort of a essential thing to jazz itself to have these other elements. That's right. Jazz has always been uh, music that has traveled around the world and everywhere it goes it absorbs a little bit of the culture that it goes to and you know people find their own way of playing it and I feel like that's what I'm doing you know right here in the US is really listening to all these amazing musics from around the world letting them influence me but then rather than trying to copy them really allow them to come through in my own way. Now you started playing piano as so many kids do taking taking classical piano lessons, right. but it was early on that you started getting introduced a little bit to jazz. Tell, tell me about that. Yeah, uh, well, my first piano teacher when I was a little girl, I started studying the piano when I was in kindergarten, uh, was, was still is a great blues and boogie woogie player in the Chicago tradition. Uh, his name is Erwin Helfer, and um, so at the end of my classical lessons, I, if I was good, you know, if I had practiced and whatever, he would play the blues for me, and then he eventually uh, invited me to sit down next to him and let me copy what he was playing. It's really a very Chicago sound, has, is deep there in my roots. Well, I love your boogie-woogie piano playing, and I'd love to get a chance to maybe play with you on some of that. Can you give it a try? Absolutely. Let's All go right. for it. Great. Myra Melford.
I'd like to thank Myra Melford for joining us, Strathmore for hosting us, and you for watching. I hope you join us again for more good music on Beyond Category. I'm Eric Felton.